to Tech Tips, Fixes, and More. I'm Ron, and today we have a Bose L1 Tower PA system, otherwise known as the Stick. And so this is a kind of an interesting uh, sound system. I've seen them used a number of times, and uh, this one it belongs to a friend of mine. It actually has uh, quit working on him, and. Uh, he did a little uh, initial research on the common causes of these problems that these sticks have and I guess uh, they often have some power supply problems so it looks like this may be the case in this one that we're going to be looking at today. The Bose sticks for those who are not familiar with them they uh, utilize uh, multiple tiny little speakers in here. Uh, probably hard for you to oh, you can maybe see it. They're only about um, two or three inch speakers, drivers, in there. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It's twelve uh, speakers in there. The thing about uh, those stick sound systems is that uh, they have this ability to amplify the sound with a real nice smooth sound uh, and not feedback. You can actually put these speakers right behind the um, your microphone and uh, so you can use them as a monitor at the same time as your amplifying the sound and then they won't feed back uh, or at least it's very difficult to get them to feed back uh, so they're often used for um, small groups or uh, single uh, performers that have maybe play guitar and sing at the same time and um, it, although they're a bit heavy they're quite easy to uh, haul around and you get a very nice sound out of them so this is the second part, and these actually stack one on top of each other. So this is the base unit, and as I understand it, the speakers actually go right into this, and it's, uh, it's heavy. Uh, so it uh, acts as a stand, and there's a connector right in here where the speaker connects right in, so there's not even any uh, wires to connect or anything. You just plug it straight in there and it works. So here's the front panel where we can uh, plug things in. It's got two XLR inputs here. Um, we've got phantom power. We've got uh, trim adjustments for each channel. I'm not sure at this point what the tone match preset uh, switches are for. We've got line outs on each channel. We've got an insert and line in so we can put effects in there. And we've got levels on each. And we've got a line out for, to go to a subwoofer. And uh, it's got a data in and data out. I'm not sure what those are just yet. And we've got the base module speaker out. Uh, on here, this is a speak on connector, a remote, your AC mains plug, and your power. We got a fuse here as well. Okay, so I've got the Bose unit on my bench, and uh, I have not connected the speakers. I went online and uh, took a look to see whether or not there was any concerns with powering this thing up without the speakers uh, connected. I couldn't find anything after doing a quick uh, search, so I'm uh, going to plug this thing in, just see if I get anything at all when uh, there's no speaker and I just turn on the power. Okay, we've got power to the AC mains. I'm going to turn on the power switch. I see nothing. No smoke. No lights. You would think that if you push the phantom power button you should get that lighting up. 
Probably gonna have to take the back off. screws out and going straight for the power supply except for first of all it, we don't have any sign of a power supply and also having read this information online that suggested that the, there's a common problem with power supplies I figured we might as well just go straight there and take a look AC power is coming in on this terminal strip and it looks like I'm going to have to disconnect that in order to get this box out of here. I'll take another picture of that just to be sure I remember which way to hook it up later. It should be pretty straightforward anyway. Okay, I'm getting close. That wire. And a couple of signal wires by the looks of it. So we've got one red and black wire coming in over here, and it's just a connector, so we we'll pop that off. Got a gray and a black and it's coming in and they're coming over to this side here to these two connectors. So let's pop those off. Take another picture first. Make sure you get the gray and the black on the right places. cable here to a connector. And this one. Thank you. 
Okay. Hopefully that should do that. Okay, so here is the Bose L1 uh, chassis of the power supply, and uh, you can see uh, a number of printed circuit boards in there. In the information that I was able to get, uh, there are uh, some very helpful diagrams that uh, kind of show us what we have here. I'm just going to kind of give you a quick overview. By the way, I will put a link to this uh, website where this additional information is. If you end up having to work on one of these systems, this is going to be very helpful for you. So here's the um, diagram uh, of the, how the power supplies are set up in this unit. Basically, we've got the AC line coming in and going through an EMI filter a bridge rectifier and a filter capacitor all of which produces between 300 and 340 volts DC which is not isolated from the AC line or earth ground and then power from there is going to an aux power supply which has multiple outputs we've got a plus 3 volts uh, plus 5 volts, plus 15 volts, minus 15 volts, plus 24 volts, and there's a connection there to the boards for protection. That uh, power is also going to the supplies that supply the power amp. There's a, and in each of these is a plus minus 27 volt supply. Uh, I'm told that um, some people have found that the, even when this supply is working, if it's not connected up to the rest of the circuit, uh, the voltage is not quite right because it's not a highly regulated supply, and so it actually has to be under load to read the correct voltage. So let's look at the actual unit and see where these are located. So the EMI filter board is located over here. It connects to the 27 volt power supplies, this one here and this one here. And the auxiliary supply with the multiple outputs is this one here. And I'm told that uh, uh, in that information that this supply uh, is not isolated from the AC power supply and it actually operates at 300 volts. And so uh, this is really a safety concern that you want to make sure that uh, the capacitors in this supply are discharged uh, before you actually do any uh, work in here. Uh, not only is it dangerous to you personally, uh, because if you are grounded and you touch uh, a part of this supply that is uh, operating at, um, uh, at one point, it's at around 300 volts, 
uh, you can get shock. Also, you have to be careful if you're hooking a scope up to this because if your scope is grounded, you could um, blow things up. So uh, that's something that you need to be very careful about. And there's more information on that in the uh, linked um, website that um, I took a look at. In that same information, there was uh, there were quite a few uh, testimonials of um, repairs that were done by these people, and uh, there was several things in common, and often the problems were on this board. Uh, my first um, step in looking at this was to do a visual inspection, and I could not really see anything obvious that was wrong, except for one. Uh, component that looks like there's been some heat and so I'll show you where that is and you'll notice that there's a this looks to me like it's a rectifier and it's got some kind of silicone on it to uh, so it stands off of the board and maybe the silicone is to stop any vibration and you can see where the silicone appears to be kind of discolored so I'm going to um, at least suspect that and take a look at that but again before I can do any real testing in here I have to make sure that uh, we don't have uh, 300 volts present on these capacitors and um, one way to handle that is to uh, just turn it off wait probably for a half an hour and it should have uh, drained off at that point but um, another way is to uh, Actual check, actually check the voltages on these um, caps. This one I think is probably the high voltage one. That one's at a 400 volt uh, 82 microfarad capacitor, and so that's probably the one to check first. And um, if you know how to safely discharge a capacitor like that, uh, then that would be a wise thing to do. I use a low value, relatively low value. Um, high power resistor that's all insulated uh, and some test leads that I uh, connect uh, across a capacitor like that and it, uh, it drains off the, the charge uh, but again you need to be careful if you're doing something like that. I tested that diode and forward bias looks like it could be good. I think I'm going to take that board out anyway and um, test that diode out of the circuit. Okay, so I have uh, removed that auxiliary power supply board. That's the one right here. Um, and I looked at the bottom of the board. I didn't see any burnt spots or anything. I checked that uh, D601, which looks like it may have gotten hot at one point, but it uh, just with a simple diode check, it seems like it's okay. I've checked uh, several of the other diodes, uh, the ones that um, have gone bad in the past, and uh, haven't uh, noticed any shorts or opens that I can tell with the uh, diodes in the circuit. So I was hoping for a simple kind of a uh, fix here where uh, something uh, obvious would uh, come up. Uh, Either we would visually see some problems or we could do a simple diode check and um, th that doesn't seem to be sh uh, showing anything so far. Maybe I've overlooked something but uh, it, uh, nothing is obvious. So I put the board back in, uh, just uh, put in one screw and I connected up a um, AC power cord to the terminals on the front here, plugged it into my uh, AC plug and uh, very carefully did some, some testing. Uh, definitely the uh, board over here is working, uh, the rectifier is working, we have 324 volts coming out of that board and going into the auxiliary board there are two cables that go down and connect in here uh, with 324 volts as it should be. So 324 volts DC is being supplied to this board. I then did some testing on the um, D601 
the DC voltages on the output. And we'll see if I can demonstrate this a little bit. I'm on the DC range. If I zoom in on it, you can see the, the voltages. There's an analog ground. The second terminal down is analog ground. And next to it is plus 15 volts. I'm reading 1.8 volts on that. Minus 15 volts. I'm reading 0 volts on that one. And as I go down the terminals here, I don't see any significant voltages on any of them. There's a digital ground here. I'll reference that and do the same measurements and basically I'm getting the same thing. Zero or a few hundred millivolts on each of these. Okay, after um, taking another look at this board, I came across one of the diodes that appears to be shorted. I'm going to have to lift one end of that diode in order to do a proper measurement, just to make sure that that um, diode, or it's actually a rectifier, is uh, not shorted. interesting. It looks like that rectifier may be bad after all. D607 is right here. It's in the minus 15 volt supply. So I'm going to take the other side of that out and uh, double check it and then see if I've got a replacement for it. So that one is a 31DQ10. I'll have to do some research and just find out what the specs if it's just a standard rectifier. Okay, so I think I'm going to close this video out at this point here and make this into a two-part video. Uh, at that point in the process, I had located one bad component and identified what it was. I then ordered three or four other components as well that were possible suspects for being faulty because I didn't want to uh, do two orders and the components themselves are not very expensive uh, individually. It took a couple of days for those parts to come in and then I proceeded to uh, put in the first one and move on from there. And I'll uh, describe what happened at that point in the next video. I also have a, a portion of that next video where I'll talk about uh, troubleshooting this kind of a circuit and circuits in general from a wider perspective. And so I didn't want to leave that out, so I didn't want to make this video too long. So I think that'll be it for this one. Uh, thanks for hanging in there with me. Uh, we did finally get this thing working and it was a very interesting fix. So thanks again. Uh, please feel free to uh, put in some comments, ask some questions. Uh, if I have missed anything that you would be interested in knowing, I'll be happy to uh, respond. And uh, I would also encourage you to uh, subscribe and uh, uh, like the videos if you uh, feel that way about them and we will get back to you soon with part two of this Bose L1 stick repair video. Mm -hmm.